Hey y'all, it's June the 30th, 2018, uh, thank y'all for joining me, I appreciate y'all as y'all already know, and y'all know who you are, and thank you uh, for your work, it's all about teamwork, anyways, you already know what it is, you know what we're talking about, uh, I thought I would go ahead and share with y'all an article uh, an article that reaches epic proportions, like I tend to do, I found it. I found it only maybe an hour ago. I want to share it with you. I do think it is epic, and you will not be disappointed. I want to say that this particular article was um, right there. You can see it was published not even 24 hours ago. I think maybe like 15 hours ago, or something like this. I mean, we're talking breaking news, all right? You know, like I, like you already know, we're being spoon-fed a little tiny, 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 tiny bits of information uh, about this whole situation that everybody's supposed to be concerned about, but nobody knows anything about. And that's Parkland, all right? <coughs> we're being uh, spoon-fed uh, little tiny bits of information. Here's another one. People are writing articles that are unnecessary and in fact suspicious in and of themselves and we're going to discuss that actually we're going to go ahead and read this article and i promise you that it's epic so uh, you will not be disappointed we're going to go ahead and read it and i figure we're going to go ahead and just break down what exactly is is going on right now right. the title of the article as you can see right here is parkland shooter texted friend that he wanted to kill people. Yet another article that by the time you read the headline, you already know what the agenda is, right? This is yet another article that needs to, absolutely needs to incriminate uh, Nicholas Cruz. It's not gonna lend you any sort of evidence, but I don't wanna have to spoil this. So another one by Rafael Omeda. All right, back on the scene. We've talked about him before. And Brittany Wallman, I guess. They work together, contact reporters. All right, and published less than a day ago. Let's go ahead and jump into it and figure this all out. Nicholas Cruz had a plan, all right, to shoot people at a park in 2020. Let's go, let's go ahead and just stop there. Why don't we, all right? <clears throat> We've been talking about how a lot of these articles don't make any sense. A lot of the evidence doesn't add up. There is no motivation. The motivation that uh, is trying to be spoon-fed to us does not add up at all, ever. My, so in the very first sentence, I want to just go ahead and reread it. Nicholas Cruz had a plan to shoot people at a park in 2020. <clears throat> this totally contradicts. I mean, if he had plans to do something in 2020 then how in the world would he be planning to shoot up? He couldn't do both of those things, All right? So you're telling me he was planning to shoot up the school and die in a hell of gunfire, and then he was also planning to shoot a park in 2020. That's what you're telling me. All right. <clears throat> so already contradicting, within the first sentence, contradicting the official narrative. All right, let's continue. That was what he told a 19-year-old former classmate who met him at an alternative education center at J.P. Taravella High School in Coral Springs in 2017. All right. So let's get into it. In quotes, he texted me saying that in the year 2020, he wants to kill people, she told investigators. All right. <clears throat> I want to point out quite clearly there is not going to be any sort of context to that statement in this article at all. There, there's nothing. He woke up one day and texted his friend, hey, in 2020, the year 2020, I want to kill people. And she said, okay, I'm going to make note of that. And that's what happened, according to this article, according to this Supposed journalist by the name of Rafael Almeida. All right. The Broward uh, State Attorney's Office on Friday released transcripts of numerous witness interviews. 
Most recount the horror as it unfolded, with teenagers describing the terror of hiding as Cruz made his way through the hallways of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on February 14th. Notice they don't say allegedly. They don't bother saying allegedly, because this is an open and shut de case, all right? It's open and shut, according to this article and thousands of articles just like it. Say he killed 17 people, not allegedly. It doesn't say he allegedly did it or he's being accused of doing it. It said he killed 17 people, wounded 17 more, and traumatized countless others. Uh, I do want to go ahead and agree with this article. And in that countless people have been traumatized by this situation. That, that absolutely is true. Other transcripts shed some light on Cruz's state of mind before the shooting that he definitely did. The 19-year-old friend made no mention that Cruz talked of targeting a school. At this point, I do want to ask, <clears throat> who the hell is this person? This friend? Who is this person? All right, you can see by the rest of the sentence that this person I'm talking about is a girl. What is her name? I guess nobody, nobody needs to know, huh? The 19-year-old friend made no mention that Cruz talked of targeting a school. No, he, tar he talked of a park for no good reason in, tw in the year 2020. Right? Or that uh, she reported his alarming messages to anyone. So she went ahead and as ominous as, as this is supposed to sound, she didn't even tell anybody. Who would she tell? Oh, I know someone who plans to shoot up a park somewhere in the world in 2020. She said he might have been angry at black people. It's like, dude, I, I feel like I'm in a tornado. I, I, I don't know which way's up and down just reading this dang article. I, I forget where I left off. The 19-year-old friend made no mention that Cruz talked of a targeting a school or that she reported his alarming messages to anyone. She said he might have been angry at black people because his girlfriend left him for a black schoolmate. <clears throat> wow. Wow. And they're still going with the racist Nazi angle. They're still using it. They're still using it. To this day, not even a day ago, did they publish this article. And, sh and the article reads, she said he might have been angry at black people because his girlfriend left him for a black schoolmate. I'm going to have to look that up. As far as I remember, that particular boy was half black at best. Not that I care. Not that it even matters. All right. All right. But this article is talking about uh, uh, that a nameless person is accusing Nick of being angry at all black people in the world. Now, let's never mind that Nick's brother is black. <laughs> Nick's brother that he grew up with and cares for about a lot is black, or at least half black, or I don't know if y'all are out there measuring it. I simply don't care. But the but Rafael Almeida really, really wants to point that out. And I do want to I do want to point out this, you know, Rafael Almeida, he's he didn't put quotes around that. He didn't put quotes around that for a reason. Alright, because Rafael Almeida is making up the story now. Alright? Or we're just gonna have to take his word for it. Here, he's going to give you a quote. He just doesn't like them at all, the friend said. He wants to kill them all. Who's them? Who's them all? Is it black people? Does that include his brother? Because this is ridiculous. All right? This is absolutely a hit piece that is being done. And it's being done, like I said, I wanted to point out is being done strategically. Notice that certain things are quoted. You're already noticing that, right? 
certain things are quoted and then certain things are not quoted. So certain things actually came out of the mouths of people and certain things are coming out simply out of the creativity of Raphael Almeida. Right? Or his assumptions or his inferences. All right? uh, let, let's just go ahead and see if we can't finish this article. Here's the thing. Before we get, before we get any further, you already see what this is. You, you already see what this is. And it is quite strategic for some reason. It does make you wonder. But uh, I got to let you know, before we get to the end of the article, this article takes a, a crazy twist. You already see what it is. It's a hit piece against Nick Cruz. I mean, it's quite obvious. <clears throat> but at the end of the article, you're gonna be you're gonna be quite. I think you're gonna be surprised and delighted to find out. Not really delighted, but intrigued to find out where this article goes. So uh, please stay with me. Another former classmate who survived shooting without physical injury. Say Cruz was known to make anti-Semitic statements as well. And now here's where the quotes come in. He used to always make bad jokes about Jews, Nazis, like Heil Hitler. I wish all the Jews were dead and stuff, he said. Now that is a quote. Apparently, <clears throat> apparently that is a quote from a person. What's the person's name? Who knows and who cares, all right? We might as well just make them up. It, oh, a person said it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a journalist. I write articles. A person told me this. <laughs> and see, okay, so that's what they want to show you and say that it's evidence of anything. <clears throat> Meanwhile, it's evidence of how detached and basically retarded that they are. Uh, they, the, 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 Raphael Almeida spends no time on the internet, apparently, at all, ever. He's never heard of trolls. He's never heard of millennials. I don't think he's ever met one. All right. He's never heard of millennial trolls who are out there by the thousands, the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands, probably, who will joke. It's kind of like an edgy thing. All right. To, to you know, be anti-Semitic, say anti-Semitic jokes. You know what's funny is most most of the millennials across the nation don't even know a Jewish person at all. All right, the anti-Semitic jokes, it's weird, it's like an edgy thing that they do because they keep, they keep uh, being taught about the Holocaust over and over and over and over again. They're so detached from that because they've never seen racism, they've never seen these concentration camps, they've never seen the world that you're describing to them, and they're being told that they're bad people and maybe they're Nazis. Maybe they, they hate the Jews. It's like they, most of these kids never met a Jewish person. All day long they're told, oh, because uh, you might be white or you might have white ancestry that hated Jews. It's like, it's a big, it's a big stupid joke, to be honest. And you'll find it all over the internet. And, and countless examples of people just saying outrageous things about Jewish people. Meanwhile, most people never met a Jewish person and, and really, honestly, do not have anything against Jewish people. It's just a weird, it's kind of a dark, grotesque meme. It certainly is, but if, if, if you are expressing the same expression that hundreds of thousands, maybe close to millions of other children are across the nation, uh, then it should, maybe they should all be arrested for 17 counts of murder. Maybe every kid who said a Nazi joke or a Jew joke or something like this, maybe they should all be arrested for a uh, mass murder. Anyways, another student told a detective that he and his classmates fled Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High during the shooting. A few minutes later, Cruz came upon him and a group of students walking toward the nearby Walmart. And I've heard about that particular situation. I know you have as well several times. Nick Cruz, he's also running away. He is in the midst of all the students. Now that obviously contradicts that little stupid uh, animation we were given by Broward uh, Sheriff's Office that obviously contradicts it. And in that Nick Cruz did not run out alongside students at any point. But meanwhile, I guess he's just super fast because he caught up with all the students as they were running to Walmart. I guess he's just super fast like that. 
All right? So here, here's some quotes. This is what someone actually said. And I said, like, I thought you got expelled last year, he said. It's kind of hard to understand, but the guy who's running alongside Nick Cruz says, hey, I thought you got expelled last year. And then Nick Cruz says, no, the school took me back in. Do you hear what I'm saying? All right. The theory that I, you know, I had earlier and that a lot of us have already had, and then that you know, Nick Cruz might have been very well been tricked into being included back in the school. Oh, no, they took me back in. Can you imagine a situation where they're like, oh, yeah, man, you can come back to school and stuff, and then, oh, you want to be a part of this drill? We're about to have this secret drill and stuff. You want to be a part of it? It's easy as that. It really is easy as that. All right, so even this article, as much as it wants to incriminate Nick Cruz, it, he can't even help but but leave a little window into the truth right there. You know, Nick Cruz is saying stuff and he's being quoted as saying stuff that completely and wholeheartedly contradicts anything that y'all are claiming to make sense. All right, so Cruz appeared frightened. Oh, I bet he would appear frightened. Can you imagine a situation where you were tricked into participating into a drill and that drill somehow turned into people dying everywhere? You might be a little bit scared by that. You might feel a little bit frightened and shaken up and like you don't know what to do. Huh? Alright, so Cruz appeared frightened. And he said he was scared before he slipped away from the crowd. He said he was scared. Right? Some people were looking at this article thinking, oh, what an evil genius. He's trying to set up, he's trying to act like he's scared so, so that he convinces everybody that he wasn't the one to shoot everybody up. Meanwhile, it's all over surveillance cameras. All right? You're definitely getting caught. And none of this makes sense. None of it does. The boy said he and Cruz were neighbors in Parkland. He said, Cruz would bring knives and bullets to school. You notice how every little bit and, and parcel of this whole article is how evil Nick Cruz can sound. How ominous can Nick Cruz be sound? Can, can, we, can we say anything that might make Nick Cruz seem even more evil than he already does? Anything. Anything at all. So here's a quote. You say, he used to show me, but I like try to stay cautious and like, no, have nothing to do with him. That sentence doesn't make any sense. And it's quite obvious he's talking to a very effeminate boy, but I mean, there's nothing against that. But that sentence does not even close to make sense. I don't know why you, who in the world would stick that sentence into an article and claim that it makes sense? Raphael Almeida, that's who. The friend from Taravella also talked about Cruz's fondness for weaponry. Let's stop right there because some people are out in this nation or uh, all over the world and they read that and say his fondness for weaponry. <gasps> he must have murdered 17 people. It's like, dude, a lot of people to include and especially boys, young boys, We'll have a fondness for weaponry. That's been the case since before anybody ever wrote books. Ever even thought about writing books. All right. And he puts it in his article like it makes any sort of difference. Like I said, people will gobble this up like it's Thanksgiving Day dinner and say, oh, thank you for the information. This seals the deal, obviously. It's quite obvious. If Cruz had a fondness for weaponry, that means that he killed 17 people. All right. She said she went to his home and he showed her his guns and a big bag of bullets. I mean, this article is just going to keep getting a little bit more worse and worse. All right. So... He let her hold one of the guns, all right? This is a person who they want you to believe hates everybody in the world, hates everything, wants to shoot up as many people in the world as possible. Meanwhile, he's hanging out with a girl. He's 19 years old. He seems like the most, you know what I mean? He's like, and not only, I mean, he's, he's not trying to shoot her. 
not only is he not trying to shoot her, but he actually lets her hold one of his guns. All right, so you can see how this article is kind of like failing to even understand and recognize that it's kind of showing you that Nick Cruz does not have, uh, he doesn't have that kind of a nature about him. All right, he's not some evil recluse, Dr. Evil, scheming and plotting to kill the world. All right, he's actually hanging out with girls and showing them, like giving them inside his house. Right, showing them guns and stuff, trying to show off for them. Okay, as she said, he told her he had autism. I'm going to finish off this this paragraph real quick. I want to talk about this. She said he told her he had autism. Right, and let's think about all the silly little rallies with autism awareness, this and that. Uh, autism speaks, which is, by the way, kind of blasphemous and. Uh, uh, the autistic community, which isn't really a community because it's all individual people. All right? She said he told her he had autism and that people at school were mean to him. All right? Apparently there wasn't, a, somehow autism acceptance, autism awareness, apparently that, that somehow that did not reach Parkland, Florida. Maybe that's why they're talking about being nicer to each other now. Maybe that's why they're talking about looking at each other a different kind of way, maybe being friendly. Because apparently, you know, autism and acceptance are reached everywhere around the world, but not Parkland, Florida, apparently. All right? And I'm saying that uh, kind of <clears throat> in a sideways manner. He always want a girlfriend. Or I don't know if I skipped. I think I skipped. She said he told her he had autism and that people at school were mean to him. She never heard him say anything anti-Semitic. She didn't date Cruz, but said he was interested in her. Now, we don't know who this person is. All right, we're not going to get a name because we don't deserve a name, apparently. We don't know who that person is. Either that person is Angie, and we found Angie. All right, Raphael wants to hold her all to himself. Either that or she's another girl by any other name. And that in and of itself would contradict, you know, Nick Cruz's old, tell Angie I love her forever and to enter the afterlife and stuff like that. Angie, by the way, is a made up person. That's not a real person. All right, I would bet all sort of money on it. That's not a real person. This was role-playing, if you will, this is what they call LARPing. This was LARPing gone wrong. All right? But anyways, just to continue, that, that just goes to show you, he's a regular 19-year-old boy who had crushes on girls and stuff. All right? He wasn't some evil recluse with an undying love for Angie, a person that nobody knows, All right? and a, and a plan to kill the world. All right. So uh, the article continues, and this is a quote. He, he, he says, he always won a girlfriend, another student said, another student by no name. He'd get mad that he doesn't have a girlfriend. Do you hear that? Another contradiction, a girlfriend. He would get mad that he doesn't have a girlfriend. He's not talking about one specific girl named Angie. Nobody ever heard of Angie. She doesn't exist. All right. How obvious could it be? All right, so Cruz used to joke a lot about killing people and killing animals. All right, that's not in a quote, but what is in a quote is, and saying how he hates school. Do you see that? Cruz used to joke a lot about killing people and killing animals. That's not in quotes. What is in quotes is, and saying how he hates school. So wild accusations are being thrown uh, Cruz's way, and nobody's being quoted. There is no quote, and even if there was a quote, nobody's names are being said. Who's accusing him of this? Who is it accusing him of this? We don't deserve to know names. But Cruz used to joke about killing people and animals, and that is not in quotes. Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Because nobody ever said that. Raphael Almeida said that. And saying how he hates school. Okay, well, he hates school. That means he murdered everybody, obviously. 
opening and shut case. She hates school. How many how many children cross this country alone, but across the world? Have expressed just how much they hate school. All right. This is this is a shameless and feeble attempt at incriminating and pretending like this is some sort of evidence because there is no evidence to give us. All right. Cruz purposefully got into fights with people, she said. That's not even in quotes. All right, so we got to take Raphael's word for it. Cruz purposefully got into fights with people. That, that sentence by itself makes no freaking sense, dude. You, and you do this for a living, Raphael. You do this for a living, and... Your article gets worse and worse and worse as it goes on. Cruz purposefully got into fights with people. First of all, who accidentally gets into fights with people? Who slips and falls into a fight with people? I mean, I know it happens, but not often. Cruz purposefully got into fights with people. What people? When? Who, who are you talking about? Why does it even matter? What does it have to do with the situation? Detectives also interviewed Catherine Blaine. I mean, like I said, this article seems to go on and on and get more and more absurd. Interviewed Catherine Blaine. That's the cousin of Cruz's late mother, Linda. And I want to stop you right there. I'll tell you right now, on a personal note, my mom has cousins. I'm sure she has a lot of cousins. I don't know who all they are. The, the cousins of my mom, who I know I've met maybe a couple times in life. Right. It's like, so they're interviewing Raphael was quick to call up Catherine Blaine for no good reason. Blaine, who lives in New York, by the way, clear across the country, said Nicholas Cruz once knocked his mother's teeth loose. Notice how none of that is in quotes. And we're talking about basically a stranger. A stranger. You're talking to a stranger about Nick Cruz. For your little hit piece. And then you feel good about that. You can go to sleep at night knowing that this is what you do for a living. That you write hit pieces and, 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 and claim like you're even invested in this whole situation. Your whole, your, whole, uh, your whole publication, anyways. She said she never met Nicholas Cruz, but <laughs> there you go. She never, she never met him one time. There's your witness right there. They're calling up on witnesses who never met him once in life. Probably wouldn't be able to recognize him out of a, out of a lineup. All right, she, she said she never met Nicholas Cruz. But that Linda told her that he wanted to go to Walmart or something, and she said, no, we're going home. He swung his hand and hit her in the mouth. All right, but she noticed what's in quotes and what's not in quotes. Do you think that's an accident? Do you? All right. So what isn't close is he wanted to go to Walmart or something. She said, no, we're going home. And then immediately the quotes are closed and he swung his hand and hit his mom in the mouth like that makes any sense. And nobody reported it. And anyways, he knocked three uh, teeth loose. Blaine said she had to go to the dentist for it because he's a savage and he used to beat on his mother, his adopted mother. Oh, because Nick Cruz is a savage, evil genius, an evil murdering genius savage who would beat his mother at Walmart, says a stranger who never met him. All right. She said the incident happened several months before Linda Cruz died November the 1st, 2017. She had $2,000 in dental bills, which is not even that expensive of a dental bill, by the way, in this case if you've ever been to the dentist. She had $2,000 in dental bills. She was still paying off when she died. Blaine said, of course she was paying them off. That's for good credit and stuff, man. She had all sort of money. She could have paid it off if she wanted it's, like, it's, it's, it's about having good credit. She wasn't struggling to pay it off. Detectives also interviewed Anthony Board, just uh, 15, who was shot five times. And yet again, you, yet again, you're going to see where the quotes start, where the quotes end, and how it's done strategically. I was like almost dead, says Anthony Borges. 
When Cruz passed in front of him again, he said, do you see that? See, this is being done purposefully. I was like almost dead, end quote. When Cruz passed in front of him, he never said the word Cruz. He never said the name Cruz. The, Cruz, the, the name Cruz didn't come up. Raphael Almeida brought it up. The, what is in quotes is, I just looked at him. Oh, he looked at him, huh? He shot out a back door and I saw two people dead. End quote. The very next word is, Cruz walked away. I mean, doesn't this, doesn't this just make you think for a second that perhaps, possibly, Raphael Almeida should be investigated for something, dude? He just, isn't he starting to seem really, really unsavory? The way that he's not accidentally fudging this whole thing up. He's doing it, uh, to use his words, very purposefully. Another student described the first shots, saying she thought a balloon had popped. And I don't want to be here all day, but really, a balloon had popped? Another student, a student thought a cabinet fell? Dude, this gunshots, dude. Who's ever heard gunshots in life and said, oh, I think a balloon popped in the distance? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude, come on. Come on! Then a bullet came through the door and hit her computer screen. Another bullet grazed her arm and ripped a hole in her JROTC shirt. I don't know if maybe that's why they said ROTC uniform in that one video that I'm sure all y'all remember. I don't really know why they said ROTC uniform. And I, I couldn't really say as to why. That's when everyone started freaking out and the teacher started screaming, saying, to take cover, she said, said nameless person, yet another nameless person. The girl grabbed her phone and called 911. Three students who have names by the name of uh, Alex Shaxter, Alyssa Al Alhadef, and Elena Petty died in her classroom. A freshman told detectives that his classroom had been shut and they didn't open it for a student who was begging to be now, I'm going to stop here, and then I'm going to continue to go through the article. But you already see right there, this whole article has been absolutely nothing but a shameless, well-calculated ploy to convince people who are halfway retarded uh, that this is evidence. And this is evidence of nothing. All right? That's what this whole article has been about. But as you could kind of tell from this last sentence that I read, the article is going to take an interesting turn, and in fact, it's actually going to start making sense. And it's going to tell you about something that you might not have thought about, or that people just ain't talking about. Now, mind you, um, you've heard a lot of people come across the media, the obsolete media, and they're talking about if you shut the door in a certain way and if you hide in a closet, that's much better than having a gun to protect yourself because if you have a gun to protect yourself, you're so stupid that you want to shoot yourself because you're a stupid idiot. All right? Instead, you close a, what's called a magic door, and if you close that door hard enough and with enough hope, um, if you close that door... That's a magic door. It's like a force field that nobody can get through. Except the thing is, if you have an AR, you don't need keys, dude. There are no locked doors. <laughs> there are no magic doors. You're talking about a bulletproof door. That's not what they had. All right? You're shooting through the windows. You can't have a bulletproof door without bulletproof windows. All right? So... <clears throat> We've heard this again and again. It's not guns that would help people and save people's lives. It's magic doors. It's if you close the door hard enough, and if you go hide in the closet hard enough, it won't be extremely easy to sh shoot y'all like some sitting ducks. All right? Because of this magic door. And I know you've heard it over and over and over. I've heard it as well. Now we're hearing a different side of this uh, of this magic door. When we think about the magic door that's supposed to save everybody from everything, and now we're getting a different perspective on the magic door. So, with
without further ado, let's go ahead and finish this article. It's a quote. It says, the first thing we heard was a kid, a boy, like saying, please, please, help me. Of course, he's probably saying it in a much more frantic manner. He was saying, please let me in the classroom. The student said, like, he was crying because, like, when that happens, you're not allowed to let anybody in. We didn't know if Nicholas Cruz was there, if he was making him do that. Kids were crying because they felt so bad because they couldn't help him. Every student who even survived in that classroom, I'm sure is going to remember to their dying days. The sounds of that kid crying for his life as the magic door did not save him. No, it didn't. Their magic door that saves everybody's life. That didn't save this young boy. In fact, it doomed him to his uh, demise. Right? It, it, in fact, was basically what uh, was the final nail in his coffin, so to speak, was that magic door that's supposed to save everybody. And everybody, let's turn off the lights. <laughs> let's go in the closet for about half an hour, maybe an hour, and just sit there and cry to each other because we have a magic door that's going like I said you have an AR 15 or an AR whatever uh, an AK or any sort of any sort almost any sort of gun when you think about it if you have almost any sort of gun there are no locked doors your magic doors ain't gonna save you unfortunately however they will they will, what they will do is keep out anybody who doesn't have an AR. Like, children who do not have weaponry on them, they'll actually get locked out, uh, and they'll get shot, and perhaps left in the hallway to bleed out slowly and agonizingly for everybody to hear that is protocol in these drills that they're, <laughs> that they're openly teaching these children to do, right? Uh, we're past Twilight Zone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate all y'all out there, man. We're past Twilight Zone. I'll holler at y'all a little bit later, man. Thank you for everything that you do. Uh, teamwork is key, man. I appreciate y'all.